Hey guys, Luna here, and welcome back to Friends in Two. <clears throat> Last we left off, we are talking with our teal and indigo blood, trying to do what is best for saving everyone. So let's get right into it, shall we? Jeez, so what do these two have a relationship that they have? Anyways, evil pl uh, plot bunnies aside, can you pick up from when you were discussing for having Tamara's article changed? Well, I can't really do anything about that now. Huh? Why not? We need Amicia for that. Proofs have to be rejected before the post can be changed. You have to log into the publication's account, go into our artwork software, and select reject or accept for the photos to show up in the article or not. And if you want to change the post, I'm going to need new photos to replace the ones that you don't like. Amicia is in charge of accepting and rejecting those. And the artwork software is only on his desktop. Okay, then you could just publish your article without any photos? Our software is set up where if the photos are not accepted or rejected before a certain cutoff time, they automatically get included in the scheduled post. I'd have no choice but to publish it as it was. And maybe she could just not post anything tomorrow night? Are you crazy? We have a schedule to follow. Our audience would be furious if we don't stick to it. No, that is not an option. But... I said no. You're not changing my mind on this. I'm not disappointing my readers over some stupid rebel's lives. But you're making such good headway early and you're changing things with that... I said for the future content, not the immediate present. Empress, you would be such a terrible legislator. Well, none of that is great. There's got to be a way to keep that post from being published the way that it is now. What can you do to stop that from happening? The only way I can see this going your way is to convince Amicia that the proofs need to be rejected and new photos made. Well, okay, that shouldn't be too hard. You're very persuasive. You sure you're up for this? Amicia is kind of a weird guy. I wouldn't visit his hive on a dare. Oh, you don't think it'd be that bad. You visited him before. He invited you over before he left just now. How bad it could be? <sighs> don't say I didn't warn you. Juno picks up the proofs from an envelope from the mail tray and hands it to you. You'll need to bring Amicia the proofs. They have a code on them that he'll need to use to log in. His address is on the envelope. Can you find it on your own? Definitely. You can with directions. Just point the way and you'll be there in no time. You... You do know that his hive is not just a straight path away from here, right? There's turns and things too. Anything can be a straight path if you believe hard enough. Trump shares at you for a moment, then shrugs. <laughs> I mean, sure. But if you get lost, just use a troll GPS site or something. I can't guarantee it will work out there if you decide to use it without the internet. But that's the risk you're, for some reason, deciding to take with this. If you manage to stay alive and come out of an indigo's home in one piece, head back to the office and I'll give the final go-ahead with having the new article scheduled to go live tomorrow. After that, you should be good to go. You will, and thank you. You appreciate her helping out with this, even though she's not 100% on board with this. Jonah gives you a curt nod. I'll be here working if you need me. But you better head out now, though, if you really want to get this done. Moonlight is burning. You nod, clutching the papers close to your chest, then rush out of the office, ride the elevator in record speed, and run out of the building to the street. <laughs> you don't know why you decided you didn't need directions, or what's leading you through the streets of Arturnia. Maybe you want to rely on your muscle memory from your past travels, or you think fate has put Blinky back to the origin of your bond with Anastasia. Maybe you're just really dumb. As are, as usual, uh, relying on dumb luck to sort out your problems. Your surroundings soon turn to more residential, uh, as you really, really hope that you're, tra that you're traveling in the right direction. Your confidence wanes the further you travel from civilization, and doubt starts crawling in. Uh, but what if this was all a mistake? What if you shouldn't have made that turn? Seriously, what do you think you're doing? Letting Fade take the wheel once again as you try and solve problems of various sizes and difficulties. And what does that bird thing looking thing over there look hungry? It's just your paranoia. God, what, what do you say? Of course you don't want to see you. It's Otania, for God's sake. You should have just used the troll map quest like Tyrion said to. Crest a hill on the bottom of it, you see a familiar silhouette. Could it be? Run down the hill, quickly catching up with the troll in question. Hey, Anastasia, wait up! Oh, it's you! What a surprise! 
Good surprise? I guess we'll find out together. I didn't think I'd see you so soon. Well, he did say he'd visit him, didn't he? You would hate to disappoint him friends. And the sage beams at you. Oh, speaking of his set, how's he feeling? The last conversation with Serona got pretty intense back there. Oh, that? <laughs> Arguing is pretty normal for us. Tarona is a strong personality, to put it politely. You have to stand your ground with her to be taken seriously. Oh, don't you know? Don't you know? But it's interesting you'd say that. Tarona mentioned that at the beginning of the two of you hardly fought at all. Well, things change. Let's leave it at that for now, okay? Oh, what do you have here with you? Oh, these these are the proofs that you're supposed to look over. You left them behind. The ones that the, for the postmark? They got sent to the office by accident. Yeah, Alternian mail gets weird sometimes and does that. It was nice of Tarona to let you bring them along to me, although they probably should have been left at the office. With you here, there's no way I'm getting any more work done for the publication tonight. You bite your lip, keeping a, a string of curses. Shit, that's not how you wanted to start this, but you know what? You think you can work with this? You can get any seizure to do this for you? You are persuasive! <laughs> And easy smiles and bounces on the ball of his feet. Follow me this way. You still owe me a visit. I'll show you around my studio just like old times. At least now all your limbs are properly attached. <laughs> <laughs> you grimace. The memory not as sweet as anesthesia, in anesthesia it makes it out to be. And you follow anesthesia back to his hive. Which... I Another little thing. Oh, it looks like you're in an area of the city that isn't supposed to be on the tour. Far be it from me to tell you what to do with your time, but I would like to remind you that trespassing in an unauthorized area is an immediately cullable offense. If you happen to find yourself detained by Legis Corpus or a high blood, check out our best-selling audio guide. So, you are about to die alone, forsaken by everyone you thought cared about you. Now available with a handy illustrated insert guide. I'd apologize about the mess, but I only ever clean when I'm expecting company. And as usual, you are unexpected, and so you get a mess. Oh, that's actually another little thing. Let's see, I'm actually gonna copy this over before I forget. That's pretty much the story of your whole life, which I actually want. Um. Okay, so it's just. Yes, they would sum up most of our lives, wouldn't it? Anastasia seems to use a trip of self, but he seems slightly fidgety. Like he's a bit uncomfortable, but it makes sense. You are seeing a little personal part of his life, one that you bet very few people, a few get to see. And you haven't exactly had the chance to reaffirm your unconditional bond of friendship. You don't think that you can bring up the ch up changing the post po posts photos while in the hazy space between friend and acquaintance that's at the level away from being promoted to friends. Maybe you should warm up to him a bit. Get to get, get him more comfortable with you before I ask him to look at the proofs. Get him to talk about himself for a bit should do the trick, and then you can talk. You, then you can ease in him into the conversation about your stuff. But besides, never had the chance to. Catch up with him yet? What better place to do that than in the most anesthesia place in the world, his own hive? Does he make his own beats? He sees a size and raises his hand in a small circle. Uh, who has the time anymore? Spending so much time considering my artistic future and trying to keep busy in. It's just a hassle, and now I've got to do it alone, and it's just not the same. I mostly just use pre made. Did you know half of it isn't even real paint? Not a drop of blood in the stuff. But we make do, I suppose. Hmm, great. You love hearing how artistic materials are not made from body parts. In fact, you have to say those are your favorite types of art materials. Yes, I've noticed that preference about you as well. Not as fun to talk about or acquire, but alas, people have different tastes. So, what are the paintings on My the My artwork, of course. Why would I have anything else there? 
He phrases it like, yeah, that's a pretty obvious answer, actually. Really obvious. But that gives us a good segue for a new discussion topic, so let's do that. I've expanded my expertise outside of just painting. Sculptures, mosaic, hodgepodge, all of it, and all with a variety of materials now. But it's hard to put on those walls, and painting is still my favorite. So that's what we got here. They look pretty different from what you've seen him make in for Toronto. Well, of course. These aren't meant to be seen and judged by other people or push a specific idea. These are for me and me alone, for the sole reason that I wanted to make them. So in short, they're for fun? Exactly. They are for my own enjoyment and never meant to leave the studio. I love getting praise for my work, but I need some things that are just for me as well. Torona doesn't really care about the creativity of the photos she's given. As long as they capture whatever she wants her article to say, she's happy. For me, the creativity is what is being said if that makes sense. Does that mean he doesn't like the work he does for Toronto? Commission work is rarely the most exciting. Whatever bounces around my think pan is always more interesting than anyone tells me to make. Easier too. I don't dislike what I make for the publication, I just prefer making what I want when I want to make it, as any artist does. Politics are something I have a minor interest in, but they aren't my primary passion. If that's the case, then why is MSH working for Toronto? Wouldn't MSH be just be happy to work on his own? I've done that before. It was fine. For a while. But then I wanted to try something else for a bit. Like working for something other than myself. Yeah, but Toronto of all trials? She couldn't be the only one running a publication. Why not her? She's infuriating, but she's bold. Hardly anyone wants to work with higher bloods. We bring prestige, but we don't have great reputations for being team players. And she knows how to run a business. All I have to do is lay out and source art, and she does the rest. 30,000 trolls and girl and get to see and praise my work, and I don't have to lift a finger on Chider to do it. To use a quote from her, results trump personalities. I have no idea what that's supposed to mean. Good for you. <sighs> I would rather not discuss Tarona anymore if that's okay. She's fine, but this is my hive, and I get to have some say in what we discuss. Agreed? Fine, you'll lay after on the chat. It's not like there aren't ever things to have to chat, chat about, right? So what is he currently working on? I'm working on loads of things. What do you want to hear about first? Oh, uh, well, you guess the thing he's most excited about. Well, I'm excited about everything. You'll have to be more specific. Okay, then how about the statue-looking thing over there? It looks like a bathtub? Ah, you must be referring to my sculpture of an ablution trap. I've been quite pleased with how it's been turning out so far. Don't you agree? Uh, sure, it's pretty cool. Why, why is he making a sculpture of one, though? Just felt like it. I wanted to make one, so I did. Oh, well, in that case, you're happy to hear some work he's working on something that he enjoys. It must be hard for him to make time for projects like this with the... the with his work for the publication. Sometimes, but when I ascend, I'll have more than enough time to make my own art. We stay inside our individual domiciles and create our own art all day and night for the expansion of troll arts and culture. Eat, breathe, and shit art, both for the Empire and ourselves. Sounds like a fantasy, doesn't it? I mean, what indigo doesn't want to be left alone to their own devices for the rest of their lives and work for their government assigned role? Well, it certainly sounds like someone's dream life, but he doesn't sound excited as he says he should be. Oh, I don't sound excited? I am! I might be tired and I'm sounding in ways I shouldn't. You've been having me talk up a storm. <laughs> you don't feel like you have. You've been talking for what you feel like is a normal amount between two people. Well, it's more than I usually talk with Tarona, and she's the only person I talk to nowadays, so yeah, this is a lot for me. That's... Too sad for you to comment on. You clamp your mouth shut and keep looking around for other things to talk about. At conversation, the subject key, well, is running dry, none of his what provided a bridge we need to bring you up to proof. Now what? So, friend, we've talked for a bit. What would you like to do now? I just received a new arrival of paint I've been dying to experiment with. Care to sample it as well? It's fresh. Oh, well, Anastasia, that sounds really lovely, but... You have some uh, bigger things you need to discuss right now before getting to that. Oh, we've done enough talking, don't you think? It's all you've ever wanted to do since you've come in. Oh, well, yes, but you haven't seen each other for a while. You really want to catch up. Yeah, and we're caught up. Let's do something else now. We'd love to. You would. You definitely do some, act do some activities in Anastasia. But first, you had this teeny tiny thing you wanted to talk about first. That's to do with the publication. Ugh. You want to talk about the publication more? Boring. Didn't Tirona tell you everything already about her operation and whatnot? Yeah, she was very thorough, but 
there's something in particular that you want to discuss with him, only he can really help with, and it involves the proofs you brought for tomorrow's article, and... I can look at those later. I don't want to think about work right now. You're here now. Let's do something together. We've been apart for so long, and no one ever comes over for fun on their own free will anymore. But you think it's really important. You have to get these proofs changed tonight, or something terrible is going to happen tomorrow. You need them to listen to you. And I'm asking you to listen to me. I said I don't want to think about the publication right now. You know, you're a lot like art. Something to look at, something to take up space and be appreciated. Not necessarily something to be understood, though. Or listened to. What? Before you left, I never really gave much interest about what people thought. But time went on, and the planet kept twirling around, and the Empire kept chipping away at Alternia, and it occurred to me how separate all my lives really are. Like here I was living my life without ever once being in any form of contact with my neighbor or the troll that jogs by my window every evening. It's amazing. They're arguably integral parts of my world. Little details that complete the picture of my life. And yet I could easily live my life as though they were never there at all. Look, you have to put your foot down. Moonlight is burning and lights are at stake. You're not doing anything else with him until he's looked at these poops and that's fine. Aw, you think you have control over my actions. I always loved it when you got feisty. It almost makes me want to take you seriously. But I really wouldn't say that now is the time for you to act like that. You're not Tarona. You don't think that just because a higher blood is working with you that you're suddenly the hottest shit that's ever existed. You're in my hive now. You said you were here for me, so you should do what I say. You're in my world now, not your world. Da -da 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 -da. But you're not just here for him, okay? You never... You were never here, never just here for him. You're here for a lot more than just him. And Sage looks at you like you shook him across the face. You're not? You said earlier that you were here to see me, though. That I was priority. You did, but that wasn't the complete truth. You're, you're here for your other friends here. A lot is going on in Tony right now. The Empire, the Revolution, the Timelines. There's so many important things at play here that you haven't really been able to prioritize anything above your own survival on the person right in front of you. You've been living your life day by day, trying your best to try and get through each and figure out how the hell you're going to make it through all this work out in the long run. In short, you can't afford to prioritize any one troll over one right now. Not one, no one is special, not even him. And if he wants to be your friend, he's going to have to understand that. And he says she looks away from you, crestfallen. He's quiet for a long moment. It's the same as always. In the picture, but never a part of the main subject. A completely separate part of reality that can exist completely independently, whether it wants to or not. And as it just shifts away from you, looking at him so despondent, clearly lost in his own sad thoughts. Oh, this might backfire you. Yes. You can get frustrated and snap at him, but he doesn't mean it has to make him feel this bad. Shit, what if he cries? You cannot handle crying people right now. You need him to snap out of this funk and get in. You got you got him in and you need to do it fast. Not only do you feel worse and seem further away from your lung if you don't do something. Be brutally honest. He was not what you brought into the office. He was not what he, he brought you to the office building. Then us. what brought you to the office if it wasn't for me? You look at uh, Tarona's earliest girl post about the music venue in Georgia Anastasia. You're here because Tarona made this nasty post about a friend of yours. You came to confront her about it, as well as invite her to join you in this new timeline. You had no idea that Anastasia was involved in any of this. And then you found out that she was running a semi-evil pro-empire digital platform thing and that she was going to post this really scary post the next day and had to beg her to change it and then yet two of you got into a big fight and, and you came here with the proofs with the hope that i would reject and change the photos before the article goes live tomorrow to get her to not post the article the way it currently is wow he picked up on that way faster than you were expecting but in short yes you would have come from some other time, you sure? It just wasn't tonight. Why are you telling me all this? Why bother with telling me the truth when you could have just lied or tricked me and have me do this for you already? Yeah, you probably could have. But you thought of doing that. Not for a moment. Why not? Because yes, these proofs need to be changed and there are lives at stake. But you're his friend. You don't know how many times you have to drill this into this thick skull. But believe it or not, despite all of enemy he sees just quirks, despite all of his threats and weird-ass tendencies, you want to make him a priority. 
you want to be his friend and you want to spend time with him. Just because he wasn't at the top of your mind when this night started doesn't change that. Friends are a part of each other's lives, not their entire lives, even when they have other important crap to do and can't be physically there all the time, they remember each other. How did he remember you? And Mizer stares at you for a long moment, absorbing everything you said, starting to feel as though they might break you through. Then without a word, he turns and runs out the front door. Well, wait up! Place the proofs on the nearby side table and chase after him, not bothering to close the door behind you. Your cerulean ranked legs come in handy. Ranked, your cerulean ranked legs come in handy. You're just able to see the back of Anastasia as he boats out of his hive, out of out of the woodlands behind his hive. Ah, the Krizatethis Park. What better way to unwind and relax after a long day of touring Everdim? Take a seat under the trees and take in the lovely night air. Enjoy a stroll around the pond and gaze at the majestic floating water bird beasts. Keep in mind that the bird beasts are extremely venomous and we do not recommend you attempt to feed, pet, or make direct eye contact with them. We hope you've enjoyed our self-guided tour and we encourage you to spend lots more time exploring our wonderful city and everything it has to offer. Everdim, if you're here, at least you're temporarily alive. That is... You listen to all of everyone's guide to town. Oh, oh, nice. That was the achievement for it. And thankfully, there's a path that you can follow, so even without you lose sight of them, you're able to run full speed without fear of tripping on a root or having a plant eat you or something. Which is definitely good. And the path ends, uh, and you're at a clearing, and then you see Anastasia. He is sitting at the e by the edge of the pond, expression pensive as he stares out across the crystal smooth at the top of the water. As you tread over carefully to them, keeping a few yards distance from him, you suspect that he would prefer to have some space. Anastasia does not acknowledge you. A few minutes pass and you sit down, your legs and butt greeting the slightly moist from the cold grass and dirt. You feel like they are close enough to something big here, you just have to get him to open up a little bit more and you'll be able to gently reach him. Talk about ducks. What, what's even wrong with you? Why the hell would you talk about that? What are you even thinking? Just <laughs> if you see some sometimes, go back and just think of something better. Um, talk about the empire. Can't help him if you won't talk to you. However, if you find out that the person generally more open if they are out out words. <laughs> So you can't help him if he won't talk to you. However, you find that people are generally more open about themselves if another person opens up to them first. Equal exchange of personal thoughts, as they were. You think back to your earlier discussion, and the seizure seemed to have some opinions of the Empire, all alluded, all, and alluded to earlier how the Empire may have been hurting him. However, he seems timid in voicing these opinions. That might be the key to all of this, the source of any seizure's anxieties and worries. If you can get him to talk about that with no filter, he might be able to accept that the Empire does not have his best interests in mind. And if he realizes that, he should be able to be more willing to work with you, even that, even le maybe even leave with you. Maybe if you tell him that, playing your opinions of the Empire, he would feel comfortable speaking freely around you. At the very least, you know that he isn't pro empire enough to turn you in for anything you might say at the drop of the hat, so you should have a fairly... So you should be fairly safe with being able to just have another thing. And we get that. <laughs> so, okay, let me uh, turn. So, you, oh. They didn't finish that. Uh, be able to just let it all on. Oh my god, you have been holding a lot of thoughts in on the Empire. You are more than thankful than ever your private discussions with Tirgas, who has given you more than a complete comprehensive view on your government dealings and transgressions. So you start talking. You tell him as easy as the faults in the Empire's principles and policies for the treatment of its citizens. Then you see rules for the Kyla hierarchy and you bullcrap and you can't think of you can think of the Form from the top of your, from the top of your head. Really, Miss Antonio, there is plenty of bullcrap. 
and he sees you disconnect, he keeps saying you're fond, not acknowledging what you're saying. That's okay, you probably still haven't hit the right nerve with an easier you need to get through to react to keep going so to lecture your thoughts on individual short rides. You have been talking way too long now. Your throat is feeling sore or and you still haven't exhausted your mental bone pile of labeled shitty things that the Empire's son is still is doing. There's and there's still no reaction from Anastasia and he's not even looking at you. He's still staying out of the pond. Maybe you need to keep going. You have to react to what you're saying. You just have to be patient maybe get a glass of water. Suddenly, Anastasia startles and looks up in the sky in the pan. Oh shit, is that the sun? You look up, orange and yellows are starting to swallow the prominent purple of the turning night sky. And when you realize that you haven't felt a breeze in a while, there's a warmth that permeating the area now, quickly growing from pleasant to uncomfortable. You feel a sinking feeling in your stomach as sweat starts to beat your breath. Quick! Back to my hive! Before you know it, Anastasia is up and out there, sprinting back the way you came. You get up and successfully not stepping on the long grass and start running after him. It's getting brighter out and you feel your s skin blister as the rays start to hit you and the tiny hairs along your skin being scorched away as the oppressive heat settles over the planet like smoldering blanket. Breathing gets harder, the air is thick as cotton, your vision blurs, air's eyes tearing as they try in vain to keep your eyeballs from being cooked from inside your skull. You may just stay out on your feet, not collapsing from the heat exhaustion yet, but you're starting to move slower, limbs feeling heavier with each step. Thankfully, you two didn't have to travel far from the hive. If you keep moving, you should be able to make it before things get too bad. One thing you do know now is that you will never ever complain about being too hot ever again. This is true heat. Burnout! No! Can't we'll see you now. <laughs> Your eyes open to a void of blank white, like a piece of featureless paper or the center of galaxies seen from the inside. Strange, because you don't remember closing your eyes. You're not sure where you are or how long you've been here. You don't feel like you're standing in anything your feet weightless. You exist in this place like air. Oh. Oh. This is, oh, this is a conversation I had in my other roads. Yeah, let's do this. So you don't want to give up. It's stupid, but you've... Okay. But you'd also want to give up. It's stupid, but you feel like this kernel of hope in you just uh, won't listen to the reason disappear. Despite all, you still want to try again. I won't pretend not to know that you're feeling a difficult journey. There's a lot at stake here, not only for yourself, but for lives of those you're trying to help. But tomorrow is the day that turns everything around. The next choice you make is what you can make all the difference. But you have to keep making choices to do that. With anything worthwhile, you have to keep going even when it's hard to find how it ends. So you don't lose hope. Keep trying until you make the right choice. Yeah, you see him. Yeah, so. Can he shut up for two seconds and really think? You dig deep off the dust of all the crags and creaks in your brain and come up with nothing. Absolutely nothing. You call out for your ideas in your mind and nothing echoes back from the canyon of your conscience. Your brain is an ashen field where nothing fruitful grows. You got squat. And so you sit, silent, completely stupid, useless. Is this what giving up feels like? I. I apologize. I shouldn't have run off like that. It was weird. Even for me. This is a side you have not seen from Anastasia before. Quiet. Reserved. You patiently wait for him to continue. It's nice of you to chase after me, though. I haven't had someone chase after me here for a long time. I used to have a friend. A higher blood. Her name was Chahut. I assume she was your friend, too. Or... At least, you knew her. You like to think she was one of your friends? We went to church together. Clown church. Church? You'll workshop that one. She was one of mine, too. As an artist, you don't get too many of those. You tend to work alone. I needed paint, and she helped me get some. Then we became friends, and she was brilliant. All the colors she would bring me, hues I've never seen before. The warmth that would seep into the paper. It was really something special, what we could create together. She was the one who pushed me to accept the position with Tarona. Said I would finally be putting my true talents on display. See the praise I deserve while I still could. She even helped me make a few paintings for the first articles I worked on. Those are the ones you see on the walls in my hive. They're not just mine. They're hers too. 
Nisisha's expression then takes on such a look of despondence. But she's gone now. And she's never coming back. She couldn't, even if she wanted to. One day, I won't be able to come back either. Indigos are secluded in their own dwellings when ascended. Perfectly silent to allow us to concentrate on nothing but our work. You're about to interrupt that you don't think that he's strictly true, but then you think about Gallic and the way he's pushed almost everyone away from him. The way he, his paranoia uh, ate him up inside. You don't say anything. When I was younger, it sounded like paradise. But now I think I understand what the lower bloods mean when there's a difference between being alone and loneliness. You see tears start to prick Anastasia's eyes and the words take on a slight wobble. And I never even got to tell her who I really am. And that just hurts, having the one person who cared about me leave. And only then to find the parts of me that were missing. I couldn't tell her any of it. I couldn't tell you either. You were both gone. Anastasia wipes his eyes, looking away from you. You're still not sure what to say. You feel like you're just scratching the surface of Anastasia. But there's so much to explore with this person, but you don't have the time to discover all of that. There's has never been time for you to truly learn who these trolls you call friends are. Even now, when you're at your most powerless, you deadlined in Scrooge's box, both unlistened to find out at once. You're allowed only to get a glimpse of what makes these characters individuals. But that's okay. You don't have to know everything about a person to have to decide to befriend them. That's one thing, one of the best things about friendship. The opportunity to learn more about someone and for them to learn more about you. The ability to create a bond that keeps you grounded and reminds you what life is worth living for. And right now, Anastasia really needs a friend. It's about time you start acting like one. You're sorry for having left. You haven't meant to. The more you see, the more you learn just how awful things have gone in your absence. You never meant to make any of your friends feel like you've abandoned them, but you don't get to decide how people feel, do you? You want to make things right. You're here now. You'll need to leave again to go find your other friends, but you'll never be able to go be gone like you were before. You want Anastasia to be able to trust you again, and you're going to do everything you can to show him that you trust is well placed. But Anastasia needs to decide that you are worth another chance. Is he willing to do that? Give you the benefit of the doubt, despite all the mistakes you've made and will probably continue to make? Is he willing to have someone to care about him again? Anastasia is quiet for a long moment before he speaks again. Have you met her yet? On your journey back here, Chahat. No, not yet, but you hope to soon. You have a lot of friends you want to try and save. If you see her, can you invite her to come to this new timeline? I'd like it if she could come. I'd like to see her again there. I have some things I need to tell her. Yeah, that's the plan, friends. You'll try. Can't guarantee anything, but you'll try. To try your absolute best. You are weird and have a lot that is strange about you. But you always try your best. I've always appreciated that. Even if it's nonsensical at times. I suppose that's a trait you only find in real friends. You feel your heart swell from his words. Yes, you say. You agree with him on that. Anastasia smiles and he stands up, brushes the gra uh, grass off his pants, and extends a hand for you to take. Let's head back to the office. I have an idea that could solve your problems here. The two of you travel back to the office, meeting back up with Tirana. So this is a new set of photos you want to use? That's right. The last focus group study you conducted showed that buildings were a bit of a snooze fest for our audience. These new photos are much more in line with what they like and should perform well on our channels. They're a bit on the abstract side from what we usually publish. You completely got rid of the building and address and replaced it with a scene of fog and fire and presumably puddles of blood. The glowing eyes are a nice touch, though. Exactly. Playing up the mystery should entice the readers to like and share the article. Not to mention it looks super badass. But is it too vague? They'll love the suggestive violence that took place, but there really isn't a story. Do me a favor and stop questioning my artistic decisions. I've already rejected the previous set of proofs, and if I say that this is better, then it has to be better. Even our alien friend here agrees with me. Ah, <sighs> fine. I'll make sure that the acceptance went through and that we're all good to go for tomorrow night. 
If the ratings go down because of this, I'm putting you on copy editing. Aw, you would be willing to replace the wiggler that usually does that for you? That's so sweet. Yeah, you are impossible sometimes. But at least these will go with the theme of the post. And it's the least I can do for you, alien friend. She dresses you directly now. You need to stand up straight. Babe. I'm sorry I won't be leaving with you. I still have too much I want to do here. But I'll do as we discussed. Just don't shit on what I'm doing here anymore, okay? Nasty feeling shoots through you. You know, it always hurts when you know you're leaving someone behind. Sometimes I really miss the hands-on approach to art. You're really just getting up your elbows and art juice. Really sick of having to talk about the Empire all the time. I'm totally being honest. Good luck with what you're doing. I mean it. Really. Now, I have to go get these set up if we're going to post on time tomorrow. So, if you will all excuse me for a moment. Astrona heads over to a computer stand and Major comes up to you. Hey, can I talk to you one on one? This new direction is going to be so good for long term engagements. Oh, of course, what's up? Well, now that your big bad problem is out of the way and I've agreed to work along with you, what happens now? How does this all, like, work? Well, it's really too complicated to explain simply. There's so much going on, like, too much for you to explain into right now. Also, you don't really have an organized plan either. You're kind of just swinging it. Winging it? Yeah, you can't really give him the exact time and place when you'll be able to bring Anastasia over to the new timeline. All you know is that you should be able to be soon, and that Anastasia should be able to pack and ready to leave at a moment's notice. You know... You are in way less control of this than I thought you were when you explained it to us at the beginning. I love it. You're really letting inspiration take the wheel here. God, you wish you weren't. You wish you were following some grand plan, something that you just let all of your hard work was achieving you to the best possible outcome you could ever achieve in all these trials and tribulations, but you are not. Can't stop wondering how much you've lost that you could have saved if you weren't just better, you guess. Oh, like Bleed to the Edge. What? It's a printer's term. Bleed is a cutoff line where the paper is cut. Any work beyond that line doesn't make it to the final page. It's literally cut off. Gone forever. Except inside your own head, where it was all nice and perfect. It's a necessary evil. If you don't cut some off, your work might not cover the whole page. And you might publish something that doesn't look right and does all your hard work a disservice. Even with all the pieces there, you don't get the whole picture. So I always have to have my artwork, which I spend hours and hours on, go over the bleed and get partially cut off. I lose part of it every time, which sucks, but I save the rest of the picture. Sometimes you can only save so much. Am I making sense? Oh yeah, actually you do get it, thanks. Though, get me to this new timeline. I'm ascending soon and now that Tarona knows that I'm not as pro-Empire as she thought, I don't know how long she'll keep pretending to call the drones on me before she actually grows some globes and actually does it. Or fire me, which would be really hilarious if I'm being honest. That won't be that surprising though. <laughs> You'll get him out of here, you promise. You just have to figure out your next person, next step from here, and then you can just keep your personal mission of your role. Well, it's not what I want to hear, but you're more than welcome to stay at my place for the time being. I've got lots of spare rooms for you to choose from. Well, that's very generous of him. You have to take Anastasia on that offer. Great. And one last thing. Not a deal breaker for me, but please try to find Chahut. I would really like to talk to her again if I could. I don't know if she'd want to see me or even remember me. Who knows what the hell happens to the minds of Ascended Purples. But still, I'm willing to take the risk. You know? Of course. As a friend, you know it means... It, what it means not to give up on someone. You can't promise anything, though. You have no idea where your travels will take you. But if the opportunity arises and you're not immediately killed on the spot, then why not? You give it a try and let Anastasia know how it went. You've certainly proven to me that friends are willing to take risks for each other. Even nonsensical ones. I'm- Oh, did I cut that off? Uh, I'm glad I'm really- I'm making this one with you. You smile and feel a warmth of blue, uh, uh, bloom in your chest. You may not have gotten everything you want from tonight, but you would think you can find a way to be satisfied with what you were able to get. At the very least, you feel the path you didn't you chose didn't lead you into a dead end. You only see more opportunities ahead to move forward from here. Another friendly picture. Yay! Go 
salvation. For a couple more hours, uh, you wander deeper and deeper into the city. We never really got a chance to ask Rona anything more about where your other friends might be. You actually stopped by the building that was in Emma Seizure's photos, hoping to find someone who might know Malik, but it looked like whoever was there had cleared out pretty recently. It doesn't make sense to you, but maybe they just moved locations by sheer coincidence. It floods you with a sense of relief. Maybe the rebels aren't doing that badly here on Alternia, but now you're not really sure where you're supposed to go from here. It feels like it's been ages since you've returned to Alternia, but now it seems like you're hitting your first real dead end. The only thing left you got is is what you fell back so many times on your first trip to Arturnia. Endless, aimless, endless, aimless wandering. Not great strategy, but at this point it's all the gods. And so you wander deeper into the city and you find yourself thinking of a maze. Is that a professional relationship? saved my progress so far. And with that, I hope you guys have a good day, night, week, month of your lives. May the stars forever guide your path, forever they might lead you into the future. Goodbye, everybody.